So good morning, good afternoon or good evening for wherever you are looking this uh, great session. Very welcome to today's session with the title Making Impact Mainstream. My name is Andy Bruckschlögel. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ride. Ride is a um, website user experience platform. I'm also the co-founder and co-host of Bits and Pretzels, Europe's biggest festival for startups and entrepreneurs. And I'm also the co-founder and, and um, chairman of EFNI um, agency for performance marketing. So I'm a kind of serial entrepreneur or I would put it more in the words of I'm really loving um, creating products and ideas. Um, short introduction about Bits and Pretzels, maybe or hopefully you, every one of you have heard about it, but as I said, it's the biggest festival in Europe for founders and the founders scene. Um, typically or usually we are taking place during the Oktoberfest. This year, unfortunately, the Oktoberfest cancelled, so the next event is in January instead of this uh, year's event and also next year in September. So next year you have the chance to attend at two Bits and Pretzels. I would like to be uh, in, in, to invite you and would be very, very happy to see you at our next conference. So today I'm very happy to welcome David Löwe, co-founder and CEO of Everdrop. David, welcome. Uh, very happy to have you here. Um, yeah, let's start with a, with a um, quick introduction. So please introduce yourself. Sure. Um, I'm David, uh, one of the founders of Everdrop and um, we try to solve a very big problem. Uh, uh, our society produces way too much single-use plastic, it's polluting our planet, and um, we try to find solutions for the people's home. An additional question about yourself is, what is your personal vision or mission? Sure. Um, so by personal or for the corporation? Just, the yeah, just to per let, let's start with the personal and then let's, let's go to the, to the corporation. Sure. Um, so. It's, it aligns a little bit with the reasons why we started Avatar. Mm -hmm. It's like um, there, I think there's so much talented people out there, and um, the reason when I um, found out that like you only have a certain limited amount of time, and um, when you're awake, mm -hmm. sleeping, and um, and most of the time it's okay to work. So my personal mis personal mission is um, I definitely want to allocate this amount of time to, for something with a certain purpose mm -hmm. that makes sense or helps to make the world a little bit cleaner. And um, yeah, this is actually a perfect segue to our job because <laughs> this is the reason why we started that. So, and our mission is um, to leave the planet a little bit cleaner behind than we found it. Mm -hmm. Then let's uh, tell, uh, talk about um, the, the vision of Everdrop, so, or, or about the early days. So, how came you up with the idea of Everdrop? So, what was the, the, the moment of yeah. the epiphany? Yeah. Yeah, as mentioned, um, at the very beginning, we, we thought, okay, we want to start something with a certain sustainability angle, with a certain purpose. And so we were brainstorming, looking for ideas, and we had really freakish ideas, so I don't want to talk too much about those things. But um, and we ended up um, walking in our, around in our homes, and when you open up the cleaning cupboard, you notice two big issues. First of all, there's like single plastic, single use plastic everywhere. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it's an aesthetic torture. It really looks terrible. Mm -hmm. So we said, oh, okay, this is interesting. Um, and then we looked into deeper into the, into the products, into potential uh, alternatives. And um, when you look, for example, into uh, liquid cleaning detergents, mm -hmm. um, you, they mainly consist out of water, mm -hmm. uh, but like, Literally everyone has water back home, especially in Europe or in Germany, very clean one. Mm -hmm. So the question comes up, okay, why the hell do we trans need to transfer the, the water around the country that we eventually buy single-use plastic? Mm -hmm. So, and the sad thing about the story is, um, once you've finished your liquid cleaning detergent and you throw away the empty bottle, it's actually a perfectly piece, working piece of product. So the cleaning spray, uh, like this, uh, this, uh, the spray trigger head and bottle, you could potentially use it for many more years, but you throw away perfectly working piece of product to buy again water and single-use plastic. Mm -hmm. But once you realize that, you realize that, you think, ah, okay, this is really inefficient and it's really a disaster in so many aspects in terms of single-use plastic, in terms of CO2 and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so there's like a big industry. It's like, it's, it's, it's incredible how big the industry is because everyone needs cleaning products and it hasn't innovated for so many years, mm -hmm. especially not in terms of sustainability. 
So that's how we how we came across it and uh, said, okay, there are very smart alternative, alternative solutions and you can definitely make it more pretty. And that's how we started. Cool, cool. Great to hear. And as I said, as a, as a serial entrepreneur and as a founder and uh, also co-host of Bits and Presses, I'm, I'm very into um, the, the early days. So um, how was then, after you came up with the idea, so how was then the, the invention of the product? So was it like, okay, we already have here some great uh, companies, but uh, only the distribution was not perfect, so you only ma made it more sexy? Or was it like really um, making R&D into this topic of inventing some kind of the drops, right? So I'm a, uh, I have to say I'm a, a very happy user of, of your product, um, a very uh, big, big disclaimer. Um, but, but, but how came the idea of, of the drop up at, or, or how was the, the R&D? Yeah, so um, okay, at the very beginning, um, so there have, have been um, uh, small labels around um, serving cleaning tubs. Um, but it was like the typical phenomenon that uh, very sustainability um, labels we're selling one tap for like uh, three euro. Mm -hmm. So and if you look like uh, the average liquid cleaning detergent costs in Germany something around one euro fifty to two euro fifty. So if you sell a tap even more expensive than the liquid cleaning detergent, people won't change. You know, mm -hmm. it's like okay, then you really have to believe in the mission. Secondly, it looks um, and in Germany we say ooky, so it has a certain sustainability look um, and to fit in the scene, and that's like the second problem that um, I would say like the very sustainability scene in Germany, they already know so many sustainable concepts, but if we want to really make a change within the society, we need to make it, make it even from an um, aesthetic um, angle, more accessible for a broader part of the society. So um, there was a certain like um, um, invention required in terms of the taps, but they've been out there already because, um, um, for example, just to give you an idea, our research and development guy who developed with us um, the, the three uh, taps, um, he, when he came with the request, he said, okay, well, guys, this is funny. I developed a first generation of those taps in the 80s already. And mm -hmm. we're like, ah, in the 80s? <laughs> and he said, yeah, uh, but uh, back then, no one wanted to have it because mm -hmm. they were all freaking out about the beautiful plastic bottles, mm -hmm. shiny plastic, colorful liquids, and stuff like that. And only now people are realizing, okay, it looks great, but it's a problem. Mm -hmm. and, and the second um, issue was, of course, um, Okay, how can you innovate like from an aesthetic point of view the whole industry like how can you create beautiful bottles so we invented like this frosted design mm -hmm. with like a certain touch and feel and last but not least and this is like the biggest challenge until today is like when you when you approach a supplier um, um, to, to order whatever powder or taps or whatsoever um, and they said okay how do you want to have the package in, in blisters or like in one sort of plastic packaging and you are no plastic please because we are trying we're trying to solve this mm -hmm. and um, so no one in the whole industry is to be equipped to give you an alternative packaging than plastic mm -hmm. so this was like the second biggest um, challenge and um, how do we find a like uh, the packaging for our product that doesn't contain any single use plastic mm -hmm. and um, so these like the three the three R and D and invention and problems we needed to solve at the very beginning and until today these these three topics are at the top of our mind for every new product that's coming up at the moment. Okay, th thank you very much and uh Funny wise, you answered my, my question because I fear the next question, what is your, what is your biggest uh, current challenge? And I think it's already, no, 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 no problem at all, but, but uh, it's cool that you, that you answered it by yourself. Um, so in, in, at the beginning you started with the, with the drops and then you evolved right and right now. I think your latest um, invention is the um, wash, uh, washing uh, uh, product, right, for, for clothes and, and wear. So, um, what is your, 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 your big vision for Everdrop? So reinventing really the whole um, um, cleaning um, industry or? Yeah, so um, as by now we have already launched over 20 products. So as you said, the, uh, different types of laundry detergents, but also like um, a dishwasher tubs. So whenever you ask yourself, why the hell is like this tiny plastic wrapping around the dishwashing tubs? I mean, yeah, and then you think, ah, oh, okay, do you really need that? And uh, the least um, toilet gel and stuff like that. So pretty much everything that is in the household cleaning sector that contains some sort of single-use plastic or um, there is a better alternative and more sustainable concept out there, this is where we put our hands on. And um, we are just about to launch this month and next month the, the first steps into personal care. Mm -hmm. So um, 
uh, we are, we, I don't know if you can translate that in, in English that, that accurately. In Germany, we say entplastifizieren. Mm -hmm. uh, so we deplastify, if you can say that, mm -hmm. the household. So we try to look, okay, where is unnecessary single use plastic? Where is sustainable inefficiency? Because, like, the whole industry the last years, they just optimized for more cleaning power, even more aggressive, stronger chemicals. But no one thought about the planet. So mm -hmm. what we try to do is to optimize for that perspective. And um, yeah, the next next uh, category is uh, the bathroom. And um, if this is where it works well, there are so many other single-use plastics in your household where we can put our hands on. Yeah, but this is the future of the show. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you you um, uh, said that um, the industry is um, optimizing, especially about the efficiency and so on. How is it about the pricing? So, do you, are you in the in the same price level, or is it like okay, it's more sustainable, meaning it's maybe more um, expensive, or what is here your range and, and what is here your goal? Yeah, this is such this is such a good point because, like <clears throat> as I just said at the very beginning, there was like a sustainability label selling one tap of three euro, and um, we we think okay, you need to have a competitive price point that you can attract like a broader um, uh, part of the society. So for example, our cleaning taps um, in, in the subscription model, we get one tap for one euro, which is significantly cheaper than the average mm -hmm. cleaning detergent. So then you can say, okay, if it's cheaper, it looks better and it's potentially more sustainable. There's not a single reason not to try it. So um, uh, people, people are very open to give it a try. Um, um, but in general, there are many products that we um, we're always fighting to keep them in the mid-price uh, range tendency, but like as I said, if you look at the packaging, for example, like the dishwashing tabs, they still need to be packed manually in paper because mm -hmm. like, there is not a single machine out there that allows you to pack uh, uh, dishwasher tabs into paper automatically. So there's so many challenges in this perspective out there already that we need to solve, and this is obviously something that uh, prevents us from being super super price competitive mm -hmm. and most importantly and this is like the sad thing and the shout out for the politics mm -hmm. plastic is still the cheapest uh, packaging um, material possible so whenever you go an alternative way it is more expensive and this is like um, a very bad uh, uh, competition advantage for for the big incumbents so um, we really hope that politics also helps to, um, um, and makes plastic more expensive or uh, put co2 under the taxes yeah, great, because it brings me also to the next uh, question. So because the title of today's uh, session is uh, Making Impact um, Mainstream, um, how do you think can we achieve this? Hmm. So first of all, um, we need to bring sustainability concepts out of like this intellectual sustainable niche. So we need to find um, approaches to address the masses. So one of the biggest challenges we always um, um, uh, are faced is to, to achieve that, you need to work with distributors, influencers, spokespersons that are not only famous within the sustainability mm -hmm. industry, yeah. because you need to address a broad part of the society. And, 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 and the, 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 the insane part of that is that then the sustainable people are becoming judgmental and saying, hey, why do you work with this guy? I mean, he's not sustainable or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Why do you work with this distributor? That's really not a sustainable distributor. And um, yeah, so the, the, the biggest challenge is um, we need to make products from a price point, from aesthetics, from distribution, from partners. We need to be more open to address the broader part of the society, we make it mainstream. And um, because uh, at the very end, we only can change something with the, big, the, broader, the broad part of the society will change their behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of, we need to overcome. Um, but potentially there is like, what we see is like, I think the only reason why Everdrop has a success, this success is because people are willing to change. Mm -hmm. and we need to address and reach out for them and, 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 and serve alternatives. Yeah, definitely and I agree. Um, I see uh, Micha Fritz is in the waiting room, um, so I have many questions, but I have, I have a last one uh, before we uh, let uh, Micha into the conversation. Um, I saw your product, um, is, uh, I saw you produce some kind of, I would say, a fuck up video about your latest product launch. Um, can you tell the, audi the audience more about this video or about the accident or whatsoever to see, okay, because I think we all can learn from this as well, especially in Germany where we don't have this fuck up culture. Uh, we for sure uh, develop it more and more, but I think this is a great example um, how it can work and how important it is to, to, to do, especially in this 
industry this kind of, 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 of things as well, right? Yeah, so um, it's not our first fuck up video. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like already, it's like our, our second or third or something like that. So um, um, when you, especially like when you try to go really new path and uh, packaging, uh, packing, packing like uh, our, our products, our chemical products and paper is a totally new um, uh, direction. Um, you face certain challenges. And for example, like to give you more, more detail, um, um, if you wanna um, um, put your powder, for example, in this specific um, part, it was like our, our dishwash powder. Um, if you wanna pack, uh, put this into a paper packaging, you need certain um, attributes. But one is this, that there's a certain water steam barrier, so it doesn't get any moisture in there. And secondly, if you try to solve the manual packaging, you want to have a sealing feature so you can seal it and with heat and close the, the, the paper so that a machine could potentially, potentially do uh, the, the whole procedure. So, and, and then we changed the recipe and it worked very well at the very beginning. And this paper um, um, it works without any plastic and it was a real innovation. And we teamed up with three companies from three countries to solve this problem because there's not a single paper out there that, that can do that. And um, at the very beginning it worked and then we changed a tiny bit of the recipe mm -hmm. and then suddenly it uh, got some moisture in it and then, you know, it, it gets, gets more crumb, crumbles and okay. stuff like that instead of powder. And we were like, oh, jeez. <laughs> and, 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 you know, then, you know, customers are getting like, okay, is that normal? And I thought I can't be buying a powder and stuff like that. And, and we said, okay, it's, it's, it's a huge fuck up and we need to be very transparent with it. And, um, and, and we, we, I think um, we need to take our community with us on this journey and tell them, okay, it's not only always easy, especially, you know, as a startup, you have limited resources and budget, you have limited resources in F&E, you have only very small time frames and windows and stuff like that. And we need to solve so many things within this short time period that there are happening mistakes. Yeah? And it, I think um, uh, what, we, what we potentially, we thought of at least what we want to do is, we want to be very, very transparent about that because first of all, we believe that people see how much effort we put in there and that there are uh, happening mistakes. And they get more um, uh, that's, that's, they 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 time or whatever that means they they be more um, 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 they don't you know be so judgmental about that that mistakes are happening. And secondly, I think it shows that we are really working on problems. Mm -hmm. and path is not easy. And, yeah. um, and also reaching out for for innovation. So yeah, um, um, it's, it's something what we do on a regular basis. Whenever we pack up, we, we share that mm -hmm. and uh, try to be transparent about it with that. And I think it's, it's something that I would expect in other companies. So we try to fulfill this duty as well. So um, yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure that it won't be our last video. But, but very, very cool and inspiring, to be honest, uh, to, to do this and um, to, to, what you said, to, to talk about fuck-ups as well. Because I think talking about success is, is so easy and uh, you see this all day long, especially if we look at LinkedIn. Everyone has success, but only, I, I don't know, one or two percent are really speaking about their problems, about fuck-ups. And it's so important because, as you said, um, inventing new things also leads to some um, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, positions yeah. where it, where it, where it uh, don't uh, yeah, happen how you imagined. Um, yeah. So, yeah, sorry? Especially if, you, and especially if you already send out the product to customers, yeah, and if you then try to be, uh, don't, don't tell anyone or stuff like that, it makes you not very trustworthy. Yeah. This is something, I think, <coughs> okay, we try to innovate, but if you fail, we also need to share this. Definitely, definitely. So, as I mentioned, um, Micha Fritz is in the waiting room. Um, please, she can you invite Micha to the conversation? Micha is in the room. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Micha. Nice to have you here. Um, and nice to have you both here. Um, before we both uh, continue in our one-on-one, um, Let's make it um, uh, yeah, yeah, um, very cool and just say, okay, um, do you have questions to each other? So um, handing over my moderation part <laughs> to, to you and, and uh, David, maybe you have a, a big question uh, to Micha and uh, his organization or actions. Uh, Micha, maybe you first, because you just joined. Like any, um, any questions in our direction? Uh, frankly speaking, um, how you manage if you constantly overstrain uh, before that, 
mm -hmm. uh, or at least I am. <laughs> yeah. From the very beginning, from starting uh, Vivo Con Aqua 15 years ago till now, that the wheel of hamster, I don't know, <laughs> sorry for my bad English, uh, I know 26 semesters, but uh, um, um, dropped out of university without any degree because of doing Vivo Con Aqua. Uh, but I'm happy about that, better that way than the other way, but Definitely. how you manage to be constantly overstrained and in that wheel and yeah, cope with it or prioritize or refocus and really like go out of that wheel and uh, because this I haven't managed till now. Mm. Okay. Okay, so like Everdrop is only 20 months old, so probably you've been longer in the wheel than me and <laughs> so um, um, and I, I totally feel you and I just can tell you what like in general because like uh, I have a daughter and I'm self-employed since seven years and, and there's like three things that, that really keep my, my body and me running um, and um, they are not work related. Um, so first of all, um, uh, one, one thing is uh, sleep. Uh, it sounds it sounds so ridiculous, but um, I'm a big fan of Matthew Walker. Uh, it's a Berkeley professor of um, uh, for sleep, and he put together a book that's called How Why Why We Sleep, um, and it's it, it has the, the results of 20 years of sleep research. And if you read that, that you freak out how important sleep is, and from that moment on, you get very protective with your sleep and, and, and put a lot of um, focus on sleeping behavior. Um, the second, uh, also related to that, I try to meditate on a regular basis. And, and thirdly, uh, nutrition and sport, like uh, try to eat mainly vegan and do some exercise. So because like I, I really believe if you keep your body and mind, like uh, if you keep like that highly energized and put like a lot of effort into that, um, he will help you to 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 keep the hamster wheel running. But to be very honest, like you 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 managed such a such an incredible mission. People can have such a cool organization. I'm I'm really a big fan of the, the work you've done. So I think uh, to achieve that, what you guys achieved in such a time, it's it it is a big mission. And um, I probably can only tell after a few years if, if we've been able to do the same. But yeah, that where I would put my focus on is. Um, just to keep your body and mind uh, perfectly smooth. It's like an engine of a car, and if that goes well, you probably can also do some speed racing or whatever. <laughs> okay, so my question in return is: um, so what we experience in the um, I, I feel you might be a little bit in the same shoes. Whenever you try to do something right, uh, like more sustainable, more social, or whatever, the bar, of, you know, of how good you have to do it is very high and people are looking ah you're doing this well but like this xyz is not good enough yeah and you you can't be that good company or whatever uh, and like in our in our perspective it's like okay you try to avoid plastic you reduce you to you try to avoid this unnecessary chemical but here look at this um this tiny ingredient uh, is is not very ecologically and so you're not sustainable yeah so how do you manage um like the the, the okay you try to do something good but there are so many out there. They just say, "Okay, it's not good enough because you do X, Y, Z." How do you how do you go keep cope with that? Um, I would answer with the line of Eminem: "My mother smokes more dope than I do." Uh, <laughs> this is the part of my where the other guy doesn't have anything to answer. He has no mm. response more because he said everything about himself. What is bad? So when I give a speech, I tell the people, "Don't drink our water." We fool you. Ecologically, it's a waste. You shouldn't produce water in plastic bottles. Not at all. Socially, it shouldn't have a price. It's a human right. Don't sell water in drink tap water. And economically, it's 1,000 times the price you pay for tap water. Why the fuck do you drink our water? It doesn't make anything. Before you buy uh, water that is privatizing water all over the world, and we all know the big companies and the brands, then you can maybe choose the social one. But uh -huh. there is no real reason. And the moment you tell them, we are not sustainable, we produce 40 million bottled waters, we are not sustainable uh -huh. on an ecological level, maybe on a social, maybe on a cultural, we're getting there, um, but still cultural uh, sustainability is a huge topic, especially when it comes to charity, the whole, old white guy, privilege, white saviorism and all that things, it's really difficult to be on a cultural sustainable level. So be 
so transparent. I, I always tell people I'm not quite talking about you. And just to make it as open and transparent to them to what they want to attack. If they see me naked on a, on a stage with a small dick, they can say, hey, you got a small dick. Yes, I make it. Of course, you see it. So nobody can make jokes of it. <laughs> So, <laughs> great, great session and conversation. So, uh, <laughs> so um, Michael, before we uh, continue on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, David, uh, thank you very, very much uh, for your time, for your great answers. Um, have a great day and see you hopefully um, at the next Pits and Pretzels event. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. So, Micha, um, let me now start uh, with the official introduction. Uh, Micha Fritz, um, all-profit activist on LinkedIn, um, co-founder of Viva Con Agua, co-founder of uh, Milantor Gallery and much more. Um, I would say one of the most inspiring uh, people I know. Um, and I typically planned, uh, because um, by accident, um, they have here the Viva Con Agua bottle. And, um, I was at the beginning very happy to show this after now hearing everything. <laughs> it, it, it would be better to uh, take uh, water from uh, the um, um, yeah from the natural basis, but um, nevertheless, I'm very happy to um, to, to drink uh, the water from your company. So as I said, um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the company of everything you're doing. Um, yeah, please introduce yourself about um, what your 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 main activity right now is or or especially what your main mission and vision is? Um, the main vision of Vivo Con Agua is to, um, to offer all people the human right and the free access to clean drinking water, sanitation and hygiene. Mm -hmm. Like basically in this world at the moment there are still 560 million people who have no access to water. So they can't go just to the next tap or, uh, um, or to a natural source where they have clean drinking water, which is not making them sick. People, if they die, they don't die because of dirty water. They, 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 they don't die because they don't have water, but they die because they drink dirty water and then get diarrhea and all that stuff. And 4.2 billion people have no access to sanitation. So it's even more than two, uh, the half of the population. Mm -hmm. And both problems do not have to exist in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. We have all the technology. We can talk now uh, via this uh, Microsoft Office. We can. We have all technology. We have all money. If you see the money that was given into the bank crisis, there's enough money in this world. So it's not about technology. It's not about money. It's only about motivation and like prioritizing the problems. Um, and yeah, and we try to make it as easy and simple and sexy sometimes mm -hmm. for people to get socially engaged. Mm -hmm. Because the big issue with social engagement is often that it's complex or complicated or you have to register and be part of the organization forever. Mm -hmm. Or um, if you even go beyond that, like 60 or 70 percent of all donations only in Germany come from people above 60. Mm -hmm. So you and me, we are not part of their target group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense for me to not introduce the young, uh, creative, revolutionary part of the society because mm -hmm. normally the evolution and the revolution comes from the younger parts and the creativity. Of course, we don't have the same amount of money, but we have other possibilities. Yeah. And that's what, what we try to do to integrate these. Yeah. And I, I saw that you do a lot of things with uh, celebrities. Um, how did uh, it come up with? Uh, so um, was it your original idea to say, okay, make it more mainstream, meaning uh, integrating celebrities or how happened this? Uh, there are two things I would like to answer. The first thing is everybody in this room who's listening to us at the moment knows that there's a water problem in this world. And if I tell them, hey, you know there's a water problem, they already, the awareness is already gone. The attention is 15 seconds, not even, because the influencers do after one second a cut. So that's the reason why I think the awareness is the problem, the attention sometimes. And people will not be inspired when I tell them what's the problem. I, it came naturally, it was no strategic plan. Some people will say now, Vivo Konakwa, wow, nice marketing strategy, blah, 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 plan. No. It was activism, it was naivety, or how do you say, it was really <laughs> pure, just do something. 
Mm -hmm. Then it came and progressed. And the idea was we were on all the music festivals and collecting the hard plastic cups because they have a deposit of one euro. And that was my reason to go backstage to ask the Ärzte or Foo Fighters or Chemical Brothers or Materia or whatever to make an announcement on stage for like 30 seconds and say, throw all your cups on stage, the cups were flying on stage, we collected them and each was one euro for clean drinking water. Wow. And that was why we get into contact with so many musicians because we had something to offer them. And I think this is the most important thing what sometimes people like, you cannot ask a musician like Chris or Udo Lindberg, can you write, uh, please play a charity concert? No, it's his job. He earns money with it. Mm -hmm. you don't write a dentist, mm -hmm. hey, can you do a charity? Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> you have to come up with a more clever idea to integrate them into the social movement. Wow, very cool idea. I haven't heard about this. Uh, brings me to my next question and partially you already answered it. Um, because that today's um, uh, title is Making Impact Mainstream um, and maybe you have uh, something to add here because my next question is how do you think we can achieve this? Um, to offer mainstream products, mainstream campaigns, mainstream... I mean, for me it doesn't make sense in the 21st century to start anything that has no social impact or social higher value for society. Yeah. And I actually challenge all companies on that mm -hmm. because um, if you produce something, give something back. If you, uh, if it's at least being a very nice uh, uh, employer mm -hmm. for for your employees, um, but even more is possible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was living in Los Angeles to start Vivo Con Agua California there, and everybody was talking about this thing called exit. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in exit. Mm -hmm. I want to start something which I want to do basically my whole life or someday maybe progress. And I really think that we have to rethink, rechange and recreate a, a society in all genres and especially in the economic system where it's not on, on, on just value driven and making money and get out there. Mm -hmm. but giving back to, to community and, 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 yeah, and make a more fairer deal on the resources on the world. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what uh, do you think um, can um, politics uh, do? Be more honest. Mm -hmm. First of all, I would love to see honest politicians uh, on stage. I know it will be hard for them to get some votes, but um, I think stop the show a little bit because mm -hmm. it's too much uh, show, it's too, uh, it's getting away from the, from their responsibility actually what they have. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes you see that um, it's not about the topics, it's not about the programs, it's not, it's about like either you that party or that and we all see that um, the world is going sometimes more into left and right and mm -hmm. good and bad but we have to go together. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this should be done by politicians mm -hmm. to connect, um, to create ideas, to um, be role models mm -hmm. uh, really for society. And this means to be diverse, to be younger, to be fresher, to, be, to come up with ideas that not come out of your own mind, but of others. Put them on platforms, go back a little bit, don't mm -hmm. take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, because we, we all have this kind of amount, uh, I mean, in, uh, we as white privileged guys, we have something like 18, 90 years. Mm -hmm. We already have to compare to other people on this planet, like double time, like, because some of them have only 45 years or 50 years to, to live on that planet. So we only have a, a, a short time amount of time on this planet. So we shouldn't take it too seriously. We should have a lot of fun and, um, but it should be all profit. Mm -hmm. So think about the profits of the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally agree and thank you very much for this great answer. Uh, the next question is, what is your current uh, biggest challenge with Vivocon Agro or in general with all your companies or activities? I mean, frankly speaking, um, we have some concerning Corona, we have really some, comp as we have 14 different entities. Wow. Uh, doing eight are doing the, the organization like in Uganda, Ethiopia, uh, uh, South Africa, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, like the 
uh, organization, the charity organization, and the other are the social businesses. And due to Corona, three of them are really lacking money. Mm -hmm. So basically, we need money on the market. Okay. And the other thing is to understand that we are operating as a media house mm -hmm. and um, understand how to run a media house or to create a media house or be a media house and really like um, improve our communication skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So money and communication. Okay. Okay. And money, I think we all can do uh, here something in uh, buying more Viva Con Agua. <laughs> so definitely to, to, to support you. Um, and my last question is, what is your... Um, Besides, uh, for sure, uh, solving your biggest challenge, um, your next big, big thing. So, do you have any any plans uh, with Viva, a big, bigger plans with Viva Con Agua, or do you like to invent something new, or what is what is here something you're thinking about? Frankly speaking, we're constantly inventing and doing new stuff because the moment we are getting bored, we start something new, mm -hmm. which is a problem because then you have a lot of hamsters. <laughs> yeah. I know that very well. <laughs> and it's also, in a way, we are part of this capitalist system of more, faster, bigger, better, blah, blah, blah. This linear development, which is, uh, I think the, the, for us at the moment, we have really started a new, uh, a lot of new businesses, social businesses, um, and with the hotel in South Africa and in Hamburg, which is also a social business and it's a huge, I mean, it's 12 floors, it's 30 million um, we got from the bank as a credit, 6.5 million we raised by musicians, artists uh, who gave us the money, no, no donations involved. It took us five years to, to uh, really write the concepts, to get all people on board. So to make that happen will, I think, be the focus of the next two, three years. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And, There will come something uh, besides, I'm, I'm quite sure, because the moment, for example, with this call now, there will be one person who I connect with, or there will be another person who will start something. So, Vivo Conagua is like this river, it's never the same, mm -hmm. it's always changing, mm -hmm. and I think um, that's the, for me, most interesting part of it. It's always changing and always uh, positive. Okay. And last but not least, uh, do you have any, some kind of advice for the audience? or anything you would like to, to tell the audience? Who am I to advise? Uh, probably a much smarter audience than me. Um, I think don't take everything so seriously. At the end, it's mm -hmm. so the really important stuff is really your family, your health. You will recognize the moment you have health problems or anything else. All the things people told you already, the older guys, you can't take money into the grave, yeah. uh, money makes you not happy, yeah, then don't go for exit. Yeah. <laughs> don't go for exit. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree and I think um, I, I read some, some weeks ago um, uh, some kind of a, of a quote which I think it's exactly what you said, so if you are healthy you have thousand uh, wishes, if you are uh, sick you have only one, getting healthy. So, um, but you only recognize it if you are sick. So I think it makes totally sense to, uh, yeah, remind yourself every day about uh, this fact. So, uh, Micha, thank you very, very much for the great conversation. Um, have a great day and hope to see you as, uh, very soon in person um, in Munich. So, have a great day. Bye. And to the audience, I <laughs> thank you. Um, to the audience, I hope you enjoyed uh, the session. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day as well and hope to see you soon in person. Bye.